whiskey lovers. Okay, so it's the second week of July, and it's delivery week. And we have a rather special one for this from the club. The Lark, The Rising Tide. A rather fitting title, given that this was actually delayed in its delivery for the last two days because of the flood waters around here. Okay, so we have a we have discussed the history of Australian whiskies on this channel before, but a brief recap. Um, in the 1820s, uh, it was legalised in New South Wales. Then Demons Land already had some distillery going, but that pretty much ended between 18, 1838 to 1990. Um, we had several periods of whisky in Australia. We had the colonial uh, malt whisky period, which began in 1863 to 1929. Um, and that was largely found in Victoria, particularly Port Melbourne. Then we had the blended whisky period in Victoria again, 1930 to 1980. And that was when large British distillery companies started opening distilleries in Australia and using imported materials from Britain. Um, yeah, and that, that kind of took off after the war, but then of course the protectionist tariffs on imported whiskies um, was removed and the drop in demand for lower quality whiskies being produced in Australia dropped and we started getting really, really good stuff from overseas. And that was where Lark Distillery comes in. Uh, Lark was founded by uh, Bill Lark, who is now known as the godfather of Tasmanian whiskies. He petitioned the government in 1990 to be open small craft distilleries. And this began with the Lark Distillery in 1992, hence the 30 year anniversary. And this kind of bloomed and we're in a kind of a little golden age of Australian whiskies. Now we don't actually have any large productions of Australian whiskies, which makes them a bit harder to find probably increases the price a bit, but there is obviously a good demand for it and not surprising because it's actually quite good. So, with all that done and said, let's try the Rising Tide. Now, we've had a lark before that's also come through the club. Um, I believe the club and the lark have worked fairly well hand in hand. Um, so we've got the distinct flask-like bottle of the of the whiskey. I like it when clubs have unique bottles, just make something special about them. Ah, that lovely pop. Okay, so we have the rising tide. Now this is apparently being bottled at a 51.4% ABV. Not the strongest ABV in my collection, but strongish for a whiskey. Oh, all right, we can already see it's got a very nice amber gold color to it. Let's give it a swirl. Hmm. I'm tasting a rather floral type um, smells, maybe hints of oranges and apple, caramelized sugar or toffee. Yep, okay, let's give it a taste. Okay, very caramelly. There's a sweetness to it too, like um, a nice heavy honey. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar, you can actually get different tasting honeys based on the flowers the bees use. I know I like to usually buy a nice heavy one like an iron bark or a stringy bark. And I'm kind of getting hints of that. Maybe a hint of dark chocolate, just sort of in the finish. Hmm. Okay, that's quite um, quite lovely. So, okay, so for anyone who's interested, the club does virtual tastings on their Facebook page. So if you just go to Facebook and look up the Whiskey Club, they'll do a virtual tasting. And the one for this particular drop 
is on Tuesday, July 19th, that's seven, uh, 1900 hours, 7 p.m. I highly recommend going. You'll, they usually talk to um, someone who works there, usually someone fairly high up, or the PR person, the marketer, or the, uh, the blender themselves, and they'll go on the process of making it. It's really quite fascinating to watch. So um, until next time, Sante.